Well, good evening, everyone. Hope you're having a good uh, Super Mag Fest slash uh, Funky Fest slash whatever you want to call it. Um, I've been going here for so long that I still put numbers at the end of them. So to me, this is Mag Fest 18, whether it's called that or not. Um, <laughs> but um, so, uh, welcome to Bonus Stage: How Rare Turned Innovation into Monotony in Donkey Kong 64. Uh, preface. I'm not going to sit here and bash Donkey Kong 64 and call it a bad, boring game. There's just parts of it that get that way. Um, I think it's a good game. I think it had the misfortune of coming out between Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, which were a lot more polished and finished. Um, also, they had different development teams, uh, which I found out yesterday. Um, so, good thing I did some research. Anyways, um, so. The way I hope this goes is we're going to spend some time um, talking about this, looking at the history of bonus stages in the Donkey Kong games, country games prior to this, main, well, okay, just the three for the Super NES. Um, then we got a lot of videos of the bonus stages for Donkey Kong 64, um, like 20 minutes worth of them or something like that, okay, 18 maybe, some, some, something in there, but um, just to give you an idea. Um, so. I'm Stephen Flask. I am a creative writer. I'm a gamer. I'm an educator. Um, I teach higher education, mainly uh, freshman composition. Um, so I, according to my uh, backloggery memory card, which we all know when you have a backlog, you update it as soon as you buy something, right? No. <laughs> um, I bought Donkey Kong 64 on October 26th of 2011. I know I did not start playing it until February or March of 2014, and I finished it with 101% on June 24th of that year. I decided then that I'd never play that game again. Until last year, or two, actually no, two years ago now, 2018, I played through it again. And then when I saw what the theme for MAGFest was, I was like, I know exactly what I'm going to propose. So once the panel was accepted, I played through it again. And I even made this nice little tally sheet to keep track of everything as I went along, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, so who has played this game before? Who's beaten it before? Who's done 101% before? Okay. I feel your pain. It's not an easy task. Um, so. Before we get into um, how this is going on Donkey Kong 64 with the bonus stages, let's look briefly at how they are in Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3. Um, I'm going to try to talk while having video playing. I've never done this before, so we'll see how this goes. So, in the first Donkey Kong Country, um, bonus stages were percentage fodder. You found the room, excellent. The game didn't care if you failed it or if you passed it. It was just happy if you found the room. Um, some were in multiple levels, some were easy to find. Uh, as I said, the game doesn't really care if you fail or not, it just wants you to find the room. Um, Speedrunners usually fail those rooms anyways because it's faster that way. A lot of times you just get bananas, sometimes tokens, sometimes lives. Um, nothing super important but still useful. Um, Which one's it gonna be? Second one. And then you had this bonus stage, which had a bonus stage in the bonus stage. And was a pain to get into. And I failed. <laughs> okay, so we move on to Don Kong Country 2. Or I had one more. Oh, yeah, they even put one in one of the minecart stages. <laughs> um, I failed that one too. So, come DKC2, um, that's been loud. Um, all of a sudden you needed to find these, not just for percentage, but actually to finish the game completely. Um, nope, there's platforming involved now, um, there's, a, there's timers involved, um, there's different goals. A lot of these are find the tokens, they stick a token somewhere, you find them. Great, um, you use those to pay off uh, cr someone, I forget his name, it starts with a K. Club, but thank you. I was like crushing. I was, knew that was wrong. And he led you into the Lost World, where you get your butt kicked by really hard levels. Uh, and even your animal buddies, which you become, which you become, got to actually get in the fun with the bonus things too. Um, here's one for animal antics. Probably the hardest stage in the game. 
probably the hardest stage out of the trilogy. Uh, so yeah, this was a case where you kill them all. Um, yeah, there wasn't really a lot of differences, but no, they're contextualized to the levels. So run the beehive, you do a bee thing. Run a haunted mansion, run do a haunted thing. So they kept them with the level theme, which is good. Uh, then we go into my favorite of the three, Donkey Kong 3, Country 3. Um, I like this game a lot. Again, bonus stages are contextualized. Um, so what you see in the level is what you see in the bonus stage. Great. Um, I don't know why my capture card was being really slow when I recorded this. Um, you collect stars, kill the baddies, and they included one now, too, where you have these green bananas that appear and disappear. And some of those were quite difficult to get. Um, and then there was that lightning level, which we won't talk about, especially if you were doing the 105% where you uh, don't get the extra DK barrels. So, that was how it was in DKC 1, 2, and 3. You needed to get find those bonus rounds, you needed to complete those bonus rounds to, um, to complete the game and get the full percentage, if you wanted to do that. Um, if you're happy just with the regular ending, great, nothing wrong with that. Um, but they were important in some way. And as I said, they're contextualized. So when you go in there, you're like, okay, I recognize this. This seems like it fits with the level, it might fit with the theme, it fits with the gimmick of it's Donkey Kong Country 3, because every single level in that game has a gimmick. Um, some people like that, some people don't. So, we move to D bonus stages in DK64. So what's going to constitute a bonus stage here? Um, having played through the game over the space of, I think it was about 12 days. Uh, don't do that, by the way. Um, don't. Bad idea. Um, um, I decided to classify a bonus stage in here as having two criteria that mean you be met. One, you hear, welcome to bonus stage at the beginning. Um, I would say you just hear the, well, the regular bonus stage music, but there's actually several different themes. And then the second criteria is that the entrance barrel for it has a golden banana on it. Now why is that important? Um, there's other types of barrels too. There's ones that have Cranky on them for the tutorial, and there's ones with K. Rule's face on them near the end of the game. We'll talk about those later. Um, so anyways, so this is what constitutes a bonus stage. Um, there may be things that may feel like bonus stages, but the, I consider the rest of those to be in level, and that's because they're contextualized. And we'll talk more about this contextualization as we go through, and you'll notice very quickly as we watch some of these bonus stage videos, if you haven't played the game, you'll see how they don't really seem to fit in. Um, so, Donkey Kong Country 64, like Banjo-Kazooie and like Super Mario 64 before that, is a collect-a-thon. The game says, here's a bunch of stuff for you to find, find it. Um, so, Rare decided to completely outdo themselves and give you, and their equivalent of stars is golden bananas. There's 201 of them. Um, yes, there's actually, yes, there's a special 200, uh, extra one if you find all the fairies and take pictures of them. Um, this game, as far as I know, still holds the, nice, um, <laughs> still holds the record for uh, having the most things to collect in a game. Um, it's over, I think, 3,000 things total if you take every single individual banana. Regular banana, I should say, because um, there's five characters, 100 bananas in each level, and that's for each, and it's a lot of math. Um, I'm an English guy, so anyways, 201 golden bananas. 118 of those you get within the level or the world, whatever you want to call it, by, um, I almost said beating a boss, but that's how you get keys. Um, doing certain tasks, things like that. 43 of them come from the bonus stage barrels. That doesn't seem like a lot. But when you play the game and they keep adding more and more bonus stages in, it, fe it definitely feels a lot more like it, like there's a lot more. And then third, there's Snide's blueprints. Um, that was the easy part. I did the math, there's, very quickly I knew, okay, there's, Eight places where they're gone, eight worlds, well, seven worlds plus overworld, five in each, that's 40, minutes, that's 40. So uh, that was the easy part. The rest of it, um, as I said, I did the tally sheet and I even screwed it up several times um, with writing down how many bonus stages were in each. Um, so here's a breakdown of them. Um, so there's 15 different types of bonus stages in the game. Um, 
if you notice, some, there's a um, disparity between the amount of how they're evenly spread. Uh, the colors don't mean anything. I just took the colors for the five Kongs and just threw them there to make it look somewhat uniform. Um, yellow's Donkey Kong, red's Diddy, blue's Lanky, uh, purple is Tiny, and green is uh, Chunky. Yeah, that's the color the game assigned to them. Um, so. Anyway, so we have two Stealthy Snoops, four Big Bug Bashes, three Teeter and Turtle Troubles, two Mad Maze Malls, two Speedy Swing Sorties, two Splish Splash Salvages, three Minecart Mayhems, three Busy Barrel Barrages, four Kremlin Coshes, one Stash Snatch, three Batty Barrel Bandits, three Peril Path Panics, three Beaver Bothers, which is three too many, and four Crazy Kong cl Clamors, and four Searchlight Seeks, and I have no clue why that T would not go on the, would not join the rest of the word there. Um, so, that minecart mayhem is not the in-game level ones within the where you where when your Kongs is on an actual thing you have to collect 50 coins by the end of the track. That's I consider that to be in level. Um, the minecart mayhems here you'll see they're a lot more uh, ridiculous. Um, so as I said, this is not a bad game. It just needed a bit of polish. Um, so tables are nice, but you want to see video, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so this is here is actually the training bit, is the training stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. By the way, this game turned 20 last year. By the way, you're not gonna hear this bonus stage music for every single video because I think we all leave the room by then, including me. Um, here's the training barrels. These don't really count as bonus stages. Also, you can see my horrible swimming. Um, Actually, I'm just gonna skip over things and get right to the to the meat of it. Um, so these are in um, order of worlds, not necessarily in the order that I found them in, uh, because you totally don't get lanky immediately. So, so here's Mad Maze Mall. The idea is uh, kill the enemies and get to the end. Not too difficult if you know where you're going. Um, no, I'm not gonna show the entirety of all these. Um, that would take way too long. Here's one of the speedy swing stories. Here's some platforming. Um, so, so far everything seems kind of okay here. Uh, well, maybe this one, not the last one, but okay. It's a, this is a jungle level. We have palm trees, things like that. Kind of makes sense, even though it's in a giant barrel, right? Um, so, we got another giant barrel and we're gonna go swimming. Not so much connected all of a sudden. Um, also, the hit detection on those coins is awful if you've played the game. Um, I think it's awful, at least. Um, here's the minecart mayhem. Uh, this makes the minecart levels in Donkey Kong Country look easy. Um, and that's it for Jungle Japes. <laughs> so hang on to Angry Aztec. We have Stealthy Snoop. Um, same layout, same setup as Mad Maze Mall, except you don't want to actually get near anything this time. Um, these aren't too difficult. You just have to know exactly where those lights are going. Um, Lanky seems to have a lot more bonus stages than everyone else, by the way. I just, I didn't do any actual counting, but I think he has the most. Um, okay, we mentioned hit detection earlier. And what this has to do with uh, an Aztec level, I have no idea. Um, Yes, I'm bad at this bonus level, and yes, that fly is awful. Um. <laughs> okay, the aim of this one is you shoot melons at the snakes so they don't drop the turtles. It's a video game. It doesn't need to make sense. Um. Okay. Busy barrel barrage. Um, shoot to kill. <laughs> and do that as long as you need to. Kind of like the battle crowns, except you can't move, aside from spinning in a circle. Kremlin Kosh. Okay. Again, notice notice almost all these are taking place inside of big barrels for some reason, which have nothing to do with the levels. Um, they pop up, you shoot them. Frantic Factory, everyone's favorite level. Okay, probably not everyone's favorite level, but, um... 
Okay, this is the one and only stash snatch. Snatch. Um, it's like Mad Maze Mole, except you want to actually grab coins instead of just killing enemies. Um, Lanky's gonna float us up here to. I don't remember who has what. Batty Barrel Bandit. It's a slot machine that doesn't have good timing. <laughs> um, especially because you gotta aim, get four and not three. Bananas, by the way. Um, and that time limit is a lot tighter than you think. Okay, so, so far so good. We haven't seen anything repeated yet. Just keeping our things fresh. Peril Path Panic. Fairies. Hungry alligators. Knock them out so the fairies can make it through. And if they don't, well, you hear this terrible blood-curdling scream. Um, and you feel really bad. Beaver Bother. The goal is to get X number of those into a hole. Um, they're not very, uh, I'm not good at this one. <laughs> um, so here's Tiny, and I think she's, yeah, I was seeing what's in there. There was nothing in there. I believe this is the first of our, okay, Crazy Kong Clamor. Shoot the banana, not the Kongs. Okay. This one's not too bad, because it's, they get faster later. Okay. Gloomy Galleon. So we're in world four now, or level four if you want to call it that. Um, it's a swimming level, a lot of underwater stuff, and it's another crazy Kong clamor. So we have a first repeat. Um, and see, Diddy here brings us to, okay, our second and um, I believe our last, yes, yeah, stealthy Snoop. Um, they give you a lot more time for this one, too, because it's definitely longer. Um, again, though, doesn't seem to have much to do with the level itself. Um, okay, here's the second splish splash salvage. Okay. Um, that's me trying to figure out what that was doing up there. And I eventually remembered how to do that. Um, by those starfish with the whips or jerks, um, avoid them. It's another Kremlin Kosh. Just like the last one, I think, except you have to hit more of them this time. I don't know how I got tiny in that barrel there, because that thing at work. Another big bug bash, what do you know? I know some of this is just me being bad at the game, um, but some of it's the game, too. <laughs> Searchlight Seek. Okay, I'm a lot better at this one than I used to be. Uh, basically, it's going to go dark, and you want to hit the, hit the croc, hit the alligators, or whatever they're technically called. It starts with a K, probably, since it's a crumbling thing. Um, I don't remember their names at the moment. Okay, another Batty Barrel Bandit. What do you know? Um, probably match, let me guess, four of them? Maybe three, probably match, hit three in 45 seconds. You have time to mess maybe one of these up before you end up losing it time-wise, by the way, by the time everything cycles through. Okay, that's Gloomy Galleon. You can see it's kind of getting repetitive all of a sudden. Fungi Forest. Nice, happy level, unless it's dark. Then it's a nice, dark level. Peril Path Panic, plus two. Okay. <laughs> See, I recorded this one on Christmas Day. Um, yeah, that's what I spent part of Christmas doing was playing this. Um, yeah, my also laptop was on a fit at this point. Um, it's another minecart mayhem. You have to last longer this time. Um, Diddy's gonna fly to the top of the mushroom tower, and we get more teetering turtles. Okay. Um, Now, maybe this just seems a bit not, oh, by the way, getting, this is the one after you just chase that owl around, which is a pain, I think. Um, yeah, okay, I heard someone else agree with me, thank you. Um, by the way, you lose homing ammo in this one, but you won't lose regular ammo. Um, the game does not like you keeping homing ammo for some reason. Um, 
Crazy Kong Clamor. At this point, you might have to start mashing start to see where the banana is if you're playing on the original six, Nintendo 64 version. Um, okay, so, let's see, this is. Okay, the other speedy swing sortie. Which, for a Donkey Kong game, you think would have a lot more vine swing than it does. Um, but. Hey, that's just me. Okay. Crystal Caves. Um, hint, start with Tiny and get rid of the guy at the top so you don't have the cave ins every so often. Okay, it's our third and last busy barrel barrage. Um, they spawn at like five points, five, to five or six different locations here, and uh, that minute goes by a lot slower than you think it would. Um, It's the last crazy con con clamor, and yeah, by this point you probably do need to hit to pause to buffer the banana to know where it is, or you won't get it in time. Um, I was lucky on those there, but okay, it's another searchlight seek. Have you seen anything original for the last couple minutes? No. Are we going to see anything original? No. <laughs> But at least the music's nice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Creepy Castle, the last of the major worlds, and then we have the overworld afterward. Um, so this is thankfully his last of the minecart mayhems. Um, you have to last a minute this time. Um, they really like this one here. They give it to us four times, so. Um, the good thing is once you actually get them the first time, it's easier to get them the second. Okay, so um, this is, uh, I call the beaver bother from hell. Um, the video for this one, it took me 45 minutes to get through this one. I have 45 minutes to adjust this uh, sitting on this laptop. I don't know why that one took me so long, but, um... No, so the number's up to 25 now, um, on that. Okay, this is the last of the beaver bothers, I believe. Yeah. This only took me 10 minutes. I don't know why it was like the same amount, I just it was luckier, I guess. And I know my hurting skills need work. Um. Okay, last video for now. Uh, we got one more after this. Um, the overworld bonus stages. Um, <laughs> apparently this one's probably supposed to be done earlier because the uh, low hit count. Um, Traps are called clap traps. Okay. Well, I kept the instructions on there for once. Note, even the method of getting to a lot of these barrels is somewhat repetitive, um, especially for Diddy. He has to fly to most of them. Um, now you have to save 10 of the fairies. Um, oh, Diddy got to spring to that one. You have to fly. They give you 
give you five less seconds on this one, and uh, that does make a difference. Um, as you see, I need to keep trying. This should be the last one. I believe it's a searchlight one. No, it's a Kremlin Kosh. Sorry. Now it's 28 in a minute, so just 25. Um, I'm not sure if the red ones are worth more or not because they're really hard to hit. Okay, we'll talk about hideout helm in a moment here. Um, so, here's what I find works and doesn't work, okay? And uh, we'll talk about, and I, I have plenty of time set aside for discussion here, so uh, when we get to that, you can tell me what you really want, and know how you feel about this. Um, the bonus stages are, per so if you actually play through this game, um, I know you're seeing all these bonus stages back to back to back to back to back. When you normally play through, that's not going to happen. Um, it's gonna take you a while to get to them. And there was, said so there's 118 bananas in the game that don't require you to go through those bonus stages. Um, so they are a bit spaced out, but once you get, especially say Creepy Castle, and you're on some of those ones that you've been on so many times, it starts getting to be a bit of a drag. Um, so, but the bonus stages, at first at least, provide a break from the platforming and combat heavy bananas. Um, and exploration is welcomed by looking for those bonus barrels. Um, sometimes, you know, th the game is really about exploration. Um, however, the bonus stages are not tied into the levels contextually, and this can create a disconnect between the player and game, you know. Yeah, is it fun at first to say, oh, we're in a giant barrel and we're doing something completely unrelated to the level? Yes, but after a while it kind of takes you out of it and you go, I think they're just running out of ideas. Um, also, all but one of the bonus stages are repeated at least twice. There's 15 of them and you go to 40, and there's 43 total. So maybe they ran out of development time, maybe they just got bored, maybe someone just walked off the job, who knows. Um, maybe they decided to get, they wanted to work on Mickey Speedway USA instead or something, I don't know. Um, they do get it right, sort of, um, and that's on Hideout Helm. Um, and there's a bonus stage-like experience that's more in line with the previous three games where the things you're doing make sense within the, makes sense, like, you know, makes sense, especially because you're within what looks like the level itself. Um, however, these are required to do to beat the game. Um, you can skip getting those banana medals, probably. Yeah, you can skip getting the banana medals that you get for doing these, but you do need to do it to shut the laser off, unless you're speedrunning and you just go through the wall and skip that section of the game. Um, also, this is where your blueprints come in handy because the more blueprints you have, the more time you get. Um, I usually need about 20, uh, probably about 35 minutes to do everything um, on a good day. Um, so I need those blueprints. So Hideout Helm is going to give, takes each Kong and gives them two bonus-like stages. They're not technically bonus stages because they don't have the welcome to bonus stage and they do not have the, um, golden banana thing on him. Okay, so this looks like the level. We're Rambi, which we weren't, which we haven't been since, you know, jungle japes for like two seconds just to break a wall and a couple rocks. Um, or huts, actually. Now, DK spends a lot of time getting shot out of barrels on this game like he would in any, uh, like any con would. Um, so let's actually make a bonus stage out of it this time instead of just something to lead up to a bonus stage, you know? Um, Chunky. Um, let's see, what's Chunky gonna do here? Oh. He's gonna find the one crumbling hiding in the box and bash him. Wasn't in box one. Is he in box two? He actually is. And yeah. I totally, there's actually video of me completely missing him and running out of time. Not seeing him running around afterwards. Here's something different too. You just stand there and you shoot. Kind of like the busy barrel barrage, except you can move around. Um, again, these are short. They're quick and easy like the D, like the Super NES ones. You can get them done in like 10, 15, 20 seconds. Something like that. Um, and they're not repetitive. If the game had more of these, it might be more enjoyable to play through. Um, 
At least you were trying to do everything. Like I said, it's not a bad game, but... One thing I like about Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie is... The mini-games in those never really get repetitive. They're always unique. There's always something different about them. Um, the scoring system is usually the same, especially in Banjo-Tooie, but... They always provide something different, um, like these are providing. Okay, shoot the bees. Okay. Um, bit harder than you think, because they're the mechanical ones and they don't like to go down easily, but... Um. And we're almost done with the video. Find the Kremlin that activated the switch. Something very different than you all see once. Shoot the targets to lift the cage. Again, some of these are the things you actually wouldn't have doing in level, but because they're presented more in a bonus stage format, they give it a bit of a different feel. Um, at least I think they do. So, you have to do these to technically beat the game, though. Um, unlike the bonus stages, which you could probably skip most of. So, um, before we get to qu talk questions and things like that, um, here's some interesting websites I found while I was working on this. Um, that first one, uh, the TCRF, that's the cutting room floor. Has anyone been there before to that website? Okay, basically they're like, Here's all the cool stuff we found in the game that no one, that is not actually used, or was forgotten about, or has been dummied out, or is in previous, they actually have betas for, information for like beta builds of this game too on there. Um, the amount of stuff that Rare leaves in their games is just, compared, is mind boggling, especially compared to most companies. Um, okay, uh, this Kong's one hell of a game, uh, part one, there's another part two, that's from the Game Losers blog. Um, and it was posted in, um, 2014, I think. Um, we have pieces here from Nintendo Life and uh, Games Radar. These came out recently, like a m couple months ago, because they're like, hey, this game's 20 years old. Let's talk to the developers and see, you know, how this came about, and let's talk about the rap. And I always wonder with the rap, if they would have spent more time polishing the game instead of coding the rap, would the game be a bit more enjoyable? Maybe that's just my opinion. Um, and then, um, was anyone here for MAGFest 14 slash MAGFest in 2016? Okay, yeah. Grant Kirkhope was here. And he did a Q&A. And, &A. and uh, there's a link here too, and I know you can't really access any of these. I'll put these up somewhere where people can access them at some point. Uh, the Grant Kirkhope one's on YouTube, so uh, yeah. He talked, he talked for a good hour or so. Um, and there were some questions about Donkey Kong 64 especially how he uh, had to work on this and the Banjo-Tooie score at the same time. Because uh, David Wise and Robin Beanlin weren't available. Because I think Robin Beanlin was probably working on Conqueror's Bad Fur Day at that point. Uh, and the stuff he got out of the 64 for that game was just Okay, so, welcome to discussion time. Questions, thoughts, and concerns are welcome. I've talked for the last two long minutes, so. I'm not trying to disagree with you or anything because those are definitely hard doubles, but I feel like it's worth mentioning that original doesn't always mean better because case in point, Star Wars prequels are original. And that, hot take. But I'm not trying to disagree with you. Those are definitely hard levels, and some people don't like repetitiveness. I do, but. Well, um,. I do think the prequel movies are not as bad as people say they are. I think a lot of that's George Lucas's fault for overdirecting. Now let me finish. Um, yeah. So um, I said I don't think the game is bad. I don't even find the difficulty to be a problem, um, unless we're talking about animal antics in Donkey Kong Country 2, the squawk section. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, if the wind wasn't there, it wouldn't be too bad. Um, but. As you continue to play through the game, you've been playing for 10, 20, 30 hours, and you're stuck with another beaver bother or Kremlin kosh all of a sudden, it's okay. You know, it's when's the, you know, yeah. what's no, happened here? No, I get it. I'm like, yeah. I'm not okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's worth mentioning that original doesn't always mean better. Yeah. It does not always mean better. You're case, right. Yeah. It's, it's moot because yeah. the repetitiveness, you're right. But yeah. I just want to say it's worth mentioning. Yeah. Repeat the question, right, okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Actually, the one thing I'd say about 
about the, going back to this, I'm almost wondering if it's a pacing situation. You mentioned Vanjitsui and Kazooie, and the idea is that you had a group of collectibles you have to get as this one group of characters, but then you split it up into five of them so you could go through each level. You're like, oh, wait a minute, I've done this before. And you got on top of the fact that you get some of these bonus stages, they're kind of, the really only thing they're really doing is kind of cut down on, or cutting or increasing what your target score needs to be, maybe cut the timer a little bit. And yeah, they do kind of balance down I don't know, as you mentioned, or even some of the, I guess, not really bonus speed ones that are more contextual, like, for example, Frantic Factory, you have to do the uh, slide car races. Yeah. And like, that's always been my thing. I've always been one of those people who, when I first played, I didn't like it very much. I played it again, and it's one of these games that kind of a blood hate relationship with them because it sure went out of their way to try and make this as, you know, big a game as they could. Mm -hmm. They certainly did. But again, I guess the idea of maybe overreaching or reaching, over reaching too far. I think, yes, yeah. Uh, so uh, he had mentioned pacing, and I think uh, that does have a lot to do with it. Because with Banjo Kazooie, you're always Banjo Kazooie. Okay, so what the only monotonous thing in Banjo Kazooie is you. The, there's one. There's a couple things that are the same, and that's you know there's five Jinjos in every level, and you find them, and you get a jigsaw pe a jiggy. Okay, but that doesn't feel as tiresome as pooling sometimes. Is this because, and here, as we, said, we have five playable characters, each with five golden bananas in each level, one of which is a blueprint, um, and then um, plus with 100 bananas each to collect within that level. Do you need to collect all of them? No, but you want to get at least enough for the banana medals. Um, plus the 20 fairies or something like that, two in each level, except for the overall world, which has four yeah, I think I did my math right. Um, so I think pacing does have a lot to do with it. Um, Banjo, even in Banjo Tooie, with the pacing, with that, you uh, it's still spread out pretty well between the various mini games, and they are contextualized. And I think almost all of them, except for two of them, require Banjo. Maybe three of them actually require Banjo and Kazooie together. Most of them still require them to be together in that game. But also, as I said earlier. Um, DK64 had a lot of different people working on it than the Banjo games. Um, also, um, for some reason, there was a bug in the game that cannot be patched, that they cannot figure out, which is why oh, this game here, which is why it required the expansion pack. Um, it had nothing to really do with the size of the game. It's more of the just couldn't run, or maybe it did, was the size that just couldn't run properly. And this game does run kind of slow and laggy sometimes, um, especially when you're playing as DK. And maybe it's just a pacing thing, but He's a lot slower than the, you know, they say Chunky's slow, but he's kind of fast still, you know. They say, you know, Lanky's kind of slow, but. Um, so yeah, so pacing probably does have a lot to do with it, and after a while, you know, it's, they don't know what order you're gonna play through. They don't know if you're gonna take one Kong and just do everything at once, if you can. Um, and you know, this game's probably not meant to be played, you know, for six, seven, eight hours straight either, so. Um, okay. Uh, out of curiosity, do you think the monotony makes it easier for speedrunners to 100% the game, or do you think that's kind of like... Good question. Um, does the monotony make it easier for speedrunners to 100% the game? Um, as far as now, uh, it's been a couple years since I've watched a 101% run of the game. Uh, I know a lot of the bananas can, golden bananas can be grabbed without having to do the requirements for them. I know a lot of them can be grabbed by the wrong Kongs. I don't remember how many of the bonus stages can actually be skipped, though. Um, certainly, there is a level of playing that I do not have the speedrunners do have that would make Beaver bother go by just like that. Um, and they can actually hurt those stupid things. Um, I go clockwise. I do okay. I, you know, I go counterclockwise. I do better than going clockwise. Sometimes they just—I don't know. It's uh, also though. Um, I think a lot of the runners though also tend to use the V, uh, use the um, virtual console versions now too. And I don't know if that changes anything in terms. It does for. Yeah, and I'm not sure how it affects the bonus stages either. Um, so it's been a few years since I've watched a speed run of the game, so I'm not sure exactly how they, but uh, I don't know if that would make it easier for them or not. Um, but. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, muscle memory works to a certain extent for some of these, but a lot of it still seems to be very random, at least from what, how I, when I've played it, though. Um, I could be very wrong with how I've been doing this all along, too. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And talk about what you're talking about with mechanics. I've actually watched with a friend over Discord uh, at this point for DK64 for 101%. And that, and that, that is, of course, using glitches because the glitches weren't a thing in this game. It would take even longer. Yes. There's a, there's a lot of out of bounds content that mm -hmm. there are these band points that are worth 100 for each column, mm -hmm. which I think some of them lets them skip other portions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, and usually done on the virtual console. Um, yeah, and basically the for the speedrun communities, the speedrun community for this generally considers and uh, he's. Um, for this considers the 101% to be what the game does, which is all the banana medals, but not all the bananas, all the golden bananas though, um, all the battle crowns, the rare coin, the jet pack, uh, the two rare, the, the rare coin and the uh, N64 coin you get from playing uh, Jetpack and Donkey Kong. Um, all the fairies too, which you need for the last golden banana. Um, yeah. And also not loading certain zones and grabbing. Right, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's it's very easy to accidentally glitch in this game. The first time I played through it, I somehow got Donkey to go into the, go into the, um, in the factory, that gi the giant machine there in the middle of the thing, in the production room. I got him to go inside that. Uh, I didn't actually hit the loading zone for it, but I, he went inside of it. And I was like, how am I going to get out of this? <laughs> Thankfully, I got out pretty easily because the game's like, you shouldn't be here. <laughs> but it, I was like, oh boy. Because it's a, it's a bit of a mess when it comes to coding. Um, said I, I think this game was probably rushed a bit. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It also takes an infinitely shorter gallons. Yeah. Though incidentally, if you were to do Symphony of the Night without glitches, it would probably take it would probably take about the same amount of time playing through the game. Uh, but that's because of the backtrack for that 2.6%. Um, and Symphony of the Night's buggy too, just in a different way. But um, I think what makes DK64 a bit more of a challenge too is they kind of went, okay, this collect-a-thon thing really worked well for Mario and it's really worked, worked pretty good for Banjo, so let's stick to that instead of having more how we had for the Super NES games. Because if you know, this is the only Donkey Kong game that's really like this. Um, when they brought back the platforming for the Wii, it was, you know, just get through the level. Um, yeah, you know, still some bonus and percentage things in there, you know, tropical freeze as well. It wasn't a case of, you know, find every single thing in the world. And uh, there are some speedrunners that for their 100% actually include finding every coin as well and every thing that the, when I say the community, I mean the, if you, the community at speedrun.com, uh, where, wherever they're based at, I think that's they're the all community. there. That's enough. Yeah. Well, like that, that, that's, that's the main, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, if you don't know, there is no unified uh, body or thing or legislation for speed running. Um, it's all community based. Um, so um, basically, you're competing against yourself, even if you're competing against other people. Um, okay. Um, okay. Other thoughts, opinions, questions. Yes. Out of these five? Yes. Oh. Who's your favorite and then who's your favorite to play as? If there's a difference. And why? And why? <laughs> um, I like to play as Lanky for some reason uh, because he can, he feels and controls very differently than the other ones. Um, yeah, the walking on the hands, everything else. At first I was like, this is going to be awful. But when you actually start playing with him, you're like, you know what? This is a lot of fun. 
Um, he makes interesting noises. Um, he's actually, I think, a bit slower than most of the other Kongs. Um, you don't think he would be, but he can be. Um, some of his bonus, some of his uh, bananas are a pain in, to get, though. Um, I spent a good long while on that race with that beetle in the uh, Crystal Caverns. Um, I spent a good hour on that in the last playthrough. Um, no, I did not record it. Um, and I said his beaver bother took me like 45 minutes for some reason. Um, maybe just having a bad Friday. Um, uh, I think though my, uh, I really also like the way Tiny plays. Um, she's fast, she gets around quickly. Um, her bananas are usually pretty interesting to do. Uh, oh yeah, she reminds me of Dixie, Dixie Kong also. I don't know why they didn't just call her Dixie. Um, Cause I mean, you know, they have the hair thing going, they both do the twirl, the you know, they're the same Kong, just one has a ponytail, one has pigtails. <laughs> you know, and Chunky Kong's pretty much just Kitty Kong grown up, so. Um, a, yeah. Know, officially, officially, Kitty is Kitty's brother. And okay. Kitty is Dixie's sister. Okay. Yeah. Because, yeah, we don't know what happened to, you know, Dixie or, uh, you know, Kitty. They just kind of disappeared, um, as Kong characters do sometimes. Um, it's easier, you know, just forget about them. Um, you know, they killed poor Wrinkly Kong off in this game, so, yeah. Why would she die via a yoga accident? Oh yeah, she's doing like exercise. She's either exercising. Yeah, yeah, she's either exercising, playing uh, Super Mario 64, or napping. And uh, Cranky doesn't men seem to care at all that his wife's gone. By the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's too busy doing stuff in his laboratory. Well, um, grief does things to people. Um, it does. So who knows? Uh, maybe this game's a bit deeper than we think. Or maybe not. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Um, so, you're welcome. Who's your favorite to play as? Tiny. Tiny? Okay. Who's your favorite boss? Why is it that Jack? <laughs> you know what? I hated. You know what? I used to hate Mad Jack. Mad Jack used to take me like an hour or two. Um, and then I, because I always tried to beat him by um, going around platforms in a square and stuff until I realized last playthrough, if I just go back and forth between the two platforms, yeah, so Mad Jack got a lot easier. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, my favorite boss has, is probably the, uh, is the uh, cardboard cutout of King K. Ruling Castle in the Creepy Castle. Um, it's just such a ridiculous fight. <laughs> And the cutscenes in here are hilarious. Um, yeah. um, Mad Jack's probably second. <laughs> and at the bottom of the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The King K. Rule fight is just ridiculously um, long, uh, like most rare final bosses. Um, though it gets easier with practice, except for that ditty section, uh, because that hit detection is awful. <laughs> um, well, you say that, but then if you look at some other games from the same company, you know. <laughs> like, to elaborate on that, actually, did, I take it you were saying that you heard recently about the fact that they get all the bugginess, but I don't know, did you hear Chris Siever? I think he was on a, on a podcast a few years ago talking about the fact that the DK64 team was too new. It was like, they needed the expansion pack for that. And they're saying, well, we did Conquer's Bad Fur Day. We didn't need, need to use it. And I was just saying, like, you're not, they weren't experienced enough. Okay. It's kind of interesting to see that kind of, you know, tension from Rare within the history. Yeah. You know, facets of them. Mm hmm I mean, yeah, it's, um, if they are new, that explains, that does explain some things. Um, I mean, if you look at, remember, let's see, what right Rare, so Rare, you know, with the 64, you know, they had had um, Banjo-Kazooie came out in 97, I believe. Uh, Goldeneye had come out around the 97, 98. Uh, Banjo-Tooie comes out a couple, comes out after this. Um, yeah, it comes out in 2000, uh, near the end of 2000. Um, you know, Diddy Kong Racing had come out and was doing pretty good, too. Um, Though I've, sometimes I like that game, sometimes I don't want to think about it. Um, so yeah, so Rare's having this like good long streak going, and um, 
they just said some, you know, it's, it might have been, a lot of, probably was new people. Um, that does happen sometimes. Um, as I said, this is not a bad game. It's just not up to maybe the quality of some of the other things they had coming out at the time. And maybe that's because I think it is in some ways too overambitious for what it needed to be. Um, but it is a fun game, and it's challenging. I mean, there is no such thing as an easy Donkey Kong game that I've played, at least. Now, mind you, this is going just, I've only played the Super NES Trilogy and this, this one, so. Um, hey, how many other games had a yellow cartridge, you know? Um, the first one to the three? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zelda, yeah. 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 Yes? This kind of relates to um, the reuse of bonus stages. What do you think of them reusing bosses? Oh, that's, yes. Um, so that is something interesting, too. Um, that kind of bothered me slightly, but the fights are a bit different in each of them. Uh, but if you go back to the first Donkey Kong Country, they reused two of the bosses in that as well. They used the beaver, uh, they used the naughty beaver twice, and they used Neki twice. Uh, though technically, I guess the second Neki is supposed to be a different one, but it's still the same fight. Unless you're in the GBA version, then you get both of them at once. Um, but let's not talk about those, because <laughs> um, that's retro conning. Um, the, um, yeah, so yeah, that's a very rare thing to do. Rare to the capital are I think to reuse bosses like that, um, and the fights are different enough, especially especially the f second uh, fight with a dragon-like guy, Doragon, whatever his name is. Um, though also that's probably my least favorite fight because if you don't get those punches in the right time with Chunky, uh, you're gonna have to redo that whole fight. Um, but yeah, again too, it might be an asset thing, it might have been a time thing, not having time to make whole new bosses, and but then they took the time to make cutscenes showing these of these bosses, you know. You know, of K. Of K Rool going, oh, you got him, right? He singed my wings. <laughs> you know, so it's apparently it's maybe they didn't feel like making new ones. Um, you know, they needed bosses. I mean, they could have gone the Conqueror's Bad Fur Day route, which is a couple years later and have as few bosses as possible. But um, the game didn't seem to have too many of them. But then you didn't fight. You didn't fight any of them in a conventional manner anyway. So. Um, Gosh, okay. Uh, gosh, Conqueror's turning 20 pretty soon. Conquer is gonna be old enough to legally drink pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, at least here in the States. Um, okay, we've got about five, six minutes left. Anything else? Yes? No idea about that. Um, perhaps it was just convenient. I don't know. Um, it couldn't have been a bananas because that wouldn't have made any sense. Um, well, if you think prior to this, Donkey Kong never had a health meter. One hit and he was gone. So they had to, again, it was changing to this type of world where you need a health meter. You know, Mario never had a health meter until Super Mario 64. Or at least never had a one that was more than two hits, um, depending if you had a fire flower or not or the mushroom. So um, again, it's when you change the game world, you need to make change things. The only one that didn't change was Sonic. <laughs> uh, Sonic still, you need rings. Yeah, you need at least one. <laughs> um, but then Sonic's never been in a world setup like this either. Um, they've kind of tried, but at the same time, then they're like, yeah, let's just go back to platforming. Um, Okay, um, if for some reason you want to get a hold of me, here's my email, my Twitch and Discord, my YouTube. Um, I don't stream very often, not as often as I want to. Um, I'll try to change that this year. Um, I won't be streaming for a few weeks, I'll tell you that, um, probably. Um, okay, anything else? Yes. You are absolutely right. And you know what? I made that same mistake last year, too, when I did a Fantasy Star 2 panel. Um, I will change that right now.
See, on the screen, I can read it with no problem. Let me remove the hyperlink. If I get rid of the hyperlink, I can change the color. There, there we go. Oh, everything fell apart. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Going back to Sonic all of a sudden. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you all for coming in here. I know it's the first night, so you're probably getting a bit um, so far. Um, hope you all have a great MAGFest. <laughs> I'll see you all around. Uh, if you want to talk some more about this, we can outside here. Uh, God bless and good gaming. Have a good night. Thank you.